You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today at Answers from the Universe and the Andronicus Transmissions. Uh, here is another week, another day, another time. We're here to talk about some of the different things. We have some uh, new transmissions that have come in, and uh, of course, there's a lot of things going on in our news and a lot of anxiety about some upcoming events. I know there are a lot of people putting out information regarding fear. I want to remind everyone to keep balanced and be without fear. Let's stay in the collective consciousness of peace, harmony, and love, and open communication always. So regardless of anything else, that we know that we're grounded and connected to the earth, and there's nothing to fear and nothing to be worried uh, the divine that created us, we are here uh, to thrive. And regardless of whatever is said or done, that we're going to keep ourselves calm and know that everything's going to be fine. So with that said, hello, JP. How are you today? Hi, Jess. I'm good. My microphone stand is not brilliant, but I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, but it should be all right. It should be all right. Oh, thank you very much. And uh, things are well here in um, in Dykeside Towers. And uh, what's happened? We have a. I've got. A, I've still got a little chick. We don't know what uh, what sex it is yet. But um, anyway, nothing much. <laughs> all is good. So the the old. Um, uh, yeah. So I'm good. What's, okay, wonderful. What's happening? I, I, I noticed in the news that um, Charles Manson died. So he did. He did. The infamous Charles Manson. And did the did very you want Helter strange, Skelter later then? Yes. Uh, so he's in his own Helter Skelter right now. Welcome to the other side. And I, I talked about him during the transmissions, and I know that someone took major offense to it. I don't know why people get hung up on things. But um, I was explaining that I was, I had multiple surrogates through the um, Nazi timeline because I was Sigrun and I was part of the Vril and then they used me multiple times within a matter of years as a surrogate. And so well, some of my surrogates they used for uh, MK programs or whatever. And it wasn't me 100%, but it was an aspect of me. And so I, I made the mistake of saying that I was Sharon Tate. I was connected to Sharon Tate, as, or as Sharon Tate was part of my, the surrogate program that I was connected to. And so someone says, oh, who do you think you are saying that you look like Sharon Tate? And I was like, I didn't say I look like Sharon Tate. I said that was a soul connection. So, um, But, it, and then, you know, that was only about couple months back that we talked about it and, and, uh, and then he died of natural causes and so he's 83 years old it's surprising that he lived as long as he did but most of his life has been in prison which couldn't have been very fun so uh, anyhow I thought I'd just <laughs> bring that up because um, you know people make little side comments here and there and they don't fully understand what's being said and I understand that so it's good to always have some clarity and uh, those of you that want to understand the surrogate program, I believe Peter the Insider talked about it in one of the earlier shows as well. So it's, it's a very common, commonly uh, used. Uh, I don't know how many people were a part of the program, but those that were a part of the surrogate program were repeatedly brought into different scenarios with an agenda from the early Nazis. I believe it was the Third Reich. Uh, I could be wrong, and it was part of the Fourth Reich as well, and then maybe Monarch was involved to some degree also. I don't know. But uh, some of you are aware of the surrogates that that you've um, been connected to, and some are not. I don't think everyone was a part of it, but I'm not sure. So anyhow. Anyhow. Uh, you, know, it's, uh, you know, another controversial thing is that uh, Manson, if you actually listen to what he said, it's like most ninety nine percent ninety nine percent of us would agree with what he says now, you know, in in uh, his observation of the way the government was working and his 
you know, obviously he knew what was going on. He did. He he had an awareness and was very much informed. And uh, here again, could have been a surrogate himself, was uh, programmed or, you know, asked to participate in this experience. He he blatantly wore a swastika on his forehead. I mean, it all coincides with a lot of the this uh, Nazi agenda uh, experimentation and trying to figure out what would happen if uh, certain souls were brought in multiple times within the same timeline, you know, within a range of about 40, 50 years. And, you know, you can see a trend for me. I could pick out all my surrogates. I could see it was the same trend all the time. And and then the, and of course in my incarnation here at this time, I I broke. I've been deliberately breaking some of the the um, uh, intentions that they had for me for those programs because I want to be sovereign. I want to be liberated from it. But when you get get um, pulled in, you know you become. Uh, very entrenched in it, and I, I know some people have quite, really struggled over it and wanting to be free, and I've had discussions with James Rink and um, others that don't want to be public but um, have a clear, concise uh, recollection of being in some very odd experiences that they know related to it. So it's it's a series of events of experimentation but also simultaneously um, being in these programs is a certain awareness of, of that there are agendas behind agendas behind agendas. And so you're almost sort of coming in looking for this. And that's why many are already awakened to it and they have a sense of it. And in this case, like I said, um, Manson very likely was the puppet playing out the master plan of the puppet master and, and um, you know, drew huge attention to himself uh, as this massive serial killer, but didn't, I guess he didn't physically kill anyone. He had other people obeying him and he wasn't very tall. He was like a little bit over five feet tall. And so it's not like he had this imposing stature, but was, you know, actually small in stature. Um, but it's slightly Hitler-esque when you look at it, um, you know, as far as, kind of a guy who doesn't belong anywhere. And, you know, you see uh, Hitler was not originally from Germany, but he becomes this massive power in Germany and uh, doesn't actually, you know, carry out certain things, but has others do it and sort of has this very alluring way about him where when he's talking, I mean, it's almost like I've never, you'll never see in history everyone so attentive towards one person as you do in some of the old, videos so it was mesmerizing um hi- hypnotic and and some of the things that he's saying everyone is at a standstill they're, and they're all focused extremely focused on what he's saying and so this is this is an otherworldly type of energy oh yeah i we was, I was talking about this earlier it's like um we talk about selling your soul to the devil mm-hmm. these are the moments when he's standing in Nuremberg and he's, he's got the, the thousands of, uh, PA systems, uh, relaying his voice all over the square and everywhere. These are the moments when that's, that's what the deal is. That's when the other guy walks in. Isn't right. It? Yeah. And you know, Napoleon also not being originally from France, it's, it's kind of strange. They come from another country. They come in and become a world power. And, uh, you know, everyone listening. And then the end result is, what, what, what do they do? It's like dangling the carrot. We're going to give you power. We're going to give you everything. Just follow along with us. And, uh, you know, the end result, we're going to be victorious. And we're going to win. And then they don't win in the end. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of like, you know, here, we're going to pull you all in down this hole. And uh, that can happen to us. At any time. That's why my, my, um, suggestion is to continue, let's continue breaking down illusions so that we can step back and say, hey, that doesn't feel right or I can see through that. It's, it's alluring, but 
I can I can walk away from it. And um, you know, in in the transmissions today, you're gonna hear a little bit about that of uh, letting people reminding humans. You know, we sort of have gone along with some of this stuff because we wanted the carrot. We wanted what they were dangling in front of us. Um, you know, maybe maybe we were a little hungry. Maybe we needed more, wanted more money. Maybe we wanted something, and uh, you know, they held it in front of us, and you know, kind of just come along with us and don't don't question it. Just just follow. And it's it's never a safe place. I mean, always your your everything that you need is within you. Everything, um, you know, if you're worried that you can't make ends meet or whatever. Um, you know, find a community that you belong to, but don't don't be in a place where you're so willing to let down all of your guards, uh, you know, and close your eyes spiritually so you you don't see what's going on, and then follow the leader blindly and just become another, you know, um, what do they call it, a lemming, you know, that goes off the cliff, following everyone else. So, uh, yeah. So you have have that sort of, you know, alluring, and you could say, you know, the devil or whatever. But it, I say, it's an ET species that is uh, trying to pull something from us and trying to show, pull us astray. And it's like these uh, Revolution One beings, you know, that came over here, trying to show the um, the upper levels that, you know, oh, the the new humans, you know, the pre Adamic race accusing the new humans. Or the, the humans after the flood that they're not as they're not any good either. You know we're going to prove to you that they're not good either. So putting us in scenarios where um, we open up to being out of alignment and uh, bad things happening. So we just want to stay in an even balance and not be persuaded and affected by things emotionally. And, and there are going to be people that are going to say the whistleblowers and they're, you know, this is going to happen and everyone get excited about it and get upset and let's go, you know, just when you hear that, just, you know, calm yourself down and just let's, let's keep a, um, a level head and, uh, and we're going to get through all of it. I mean, every time I turn around, they're saying, well, it was supposed to happen in September, but it didn't happen in September. Yeah, but it's supposed to happen in December. They're always going to jump it up another month that something else is going to happen. And and so let's like be in in a unified thought. Let's stay calm and and trust that that we're here for a purpose. We have a divine purpose for being here, and that we're here to support one another as well. And if people are uncomfortable or anxious, you know, connect, be together. Don't don't create or create a situation where you're pulling away. Don't be an island. You know, get involved in the chat if you feel like you don't fully trust people too close. Do something where, you know, you feel like uh, this is a place, this is a safe place for you to express and belong and not feel like you're on the outside. So, um, yeah, with that said, <laughs> you want to add anything to that, JP, before we go into the transmissions? Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's part of an ongoing conversation that we've been having. You know, I had a long conversation last night with uh, Robert Morningstar, um, mm-hmm. who uh, I've been doing some stuff on Red Radio, and we we were we were doing the back and forth with the old uh, time traveling Nazi information, uh, and that was very very good fun. Um, and uh, so uh, we've been there's there's we're trying to there's there's some connection. There's a healing, I believe, of the Nazi timeline that was a sort of breakaway timeline, like there's a breakaway civilization. You know, they, they lived yes. in an entire reality um, that was what what was portrayed in Star Trek. That was their reality uh, of a sort, except it, you know, uh, was more Nazi than that. <laughs> but uh, some of their adventures, I imagine, came back from... The, their adventures and, and ended up on our TV screens in the 60s and that was what was going on and in the same way it's been continuing and through all these TV shows like Stargate and uh, and Fringe and uh, uh, you know uh, the, uh, Dark Skies there's there's all the uh, what's been going on behind the scenes um, 
as opposed to what's been uh, presented on our TV screens. And here we are, we're seeing Hollywood stars all coming out. There's a, there's a, a, a big, uh, a uh, glip coming out of uh, dark, oozy matter that is coming out of Hollywood at the moment. I, I, I don't think uh, it's going to recover. You know, I think there's going to... But it's going to give a really good boost to filmmakers all over the world. So that's a good thing. Yeah, you're talking about, like, the pedo stuff. and Aye. Yeah, it's it's a dirty, horrible mess. And... um Something that, that we need to take note of. Everything that's under the sun is revealed at some time or another. So there's nothing, you can't hide anything. There are no such thing as hidden corners and, 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 you know, dusting them under the mat. It's, it's, it comes out. So that, that's another illusion. That thinking that you can get away with doing all sorts of things and that no one's going to know, notice. There are, uh, the world's getting, saturated enough and there's enough of the population that this you just can't hide things anymore and people are gaining courage to speak up so it's it's actually it's a good time for us it really is and and i tell people not to be discouraged but to um because they think well the the ets aren't doing anything for us yeah well they can't come down here and just you know you know park their vehicle in our backyard um, maybe in some remote locations, people are experiencing that, like uh, like uh, Billy Meyer, you know. But <laughs> for the most part, they're doing things in other dimensions that trickle down to us, and we don't know exactly how they do it, but they are helping us in that way. And I know everyone, some people like to get everyone worked up. Well, UETs are supposed to be helping us, and yeah, let's all get angry at them right now, and and that's like. That doesn't do anything. If anything, it kind of pushes you away from, you know, actually having some support and help uh, during this process. So, you know, try to keep, like I said, keep a balance and trust. Um, the ETs are trying to help us. They're trying to help us get gain courage and remove the facades and the illusions and bring forward some of the truths of, of um, inequities and other uh, horrible things that have been happening so that those that have been thinking that they were going to get away with this stuff, they're not. Um, these corporations, they might have all the money in the world, but, you know, even with all the money in the world, you still can't hide some of the things that you've done, and some people can't be bought, which is a good thing. So, um, anyhow, maybe we should go. <laughs> Are you done? Yeah. Are you done now? Yeah, I know. I'm just kind of going off a little bit, mm. and, uh, you know, the... The whole, um, you know, no more helter skelter for us. Charles Manson can take it back with him into the afterlife. I went looking for him, by the way. <laughs> so, well, know, that's yeah. interesting because a lot of the time you say, you know, you, you often see celebrities or well-known people yeah. after they've, um, but uh, probably like in Ghost, there was this kind of big kind of black mass that came and <laughs> sucked him back to um, wherever he's going. Well, he's not his his soul's been gone for a while, so it, it's not uh, entities that have been in him. So, but I was going to try to trace and see where he went, and uh, oh, I'll let you know what I find. <laughs> uh, take take a good companion with you. <laughs> I'm not not worried. <laughs> he's at the disadvantage now. <laughs> <laughs> I know you've always got backup. So yeah. shall we, uh, shall we enter the, uh, the amazing world of the Andronicus transmissions? Yes. Let us. Okay, just... let's start with, ah, let's start with Andronicus. I'm getting weary and I want to sleep. Rest my eyes and go away where no one can hear me. Do you know of a place like that? I was thinking the same, all day and all night, journeying into the sun and stars of dreams and floating time. I know this place exists. I remember it. Tell me more. Like the brisk and sultry wind of speeding time and quiet motionless void all rolled into one. What if the expansion and looping of something mundane, a drifting sunset, an open place in a forest with the streams of sunlight or moonlight looping as an endless day. 
a backward waterfall flowing upward into something like birds flying backwards. Consider the smell of fresh ocean water moving slowly in time like an unending sculpture. How about an ocean without sound in sand dunes of enormous scales of mountainous landscapes held in place through time stopped? Then imagine scaling those mountains without difficulty instead of sinking. How about floating with the stars and drifting through the sun gate with bright shining diamonds and visions of lovely reflections of glimmering planets and moons? How about you sleeping for a while, Andronicus, and forgetting about your pains and sorrows and forgetting about those who didn't understand, who didn't love you as you love them? Just a gentle slumber to help your mind sort through the rubbish of time-torn conflicts. I know it has taken a lot out of you. It has. I've struggled over time. It has been a while since I've rested. I've tried to go off to nether plains to observe and set down the things I know to be and not be. I've created spaces for other future civilizations. I've assisted the politic of the mindset on Earth and other civilizations not known to humankind, but are quite similar to humankind. Lest I bear any further burdens, I sorrow for not doing more. Is it possible you're quite hard on yourself? Remember the interplay of free will and the choices of many individually, as well as collectively, has a strong influence in it all. I know the truth of the matter and cannot lay blame, but feel that I could have done more or better. It was not always an issue of my flirtation or curious ways, but rather for the most part I was reclusive, holding on to my own thoughts of multiverses in mind. My outward expression was merely a sampling of my own strata persona. Let me say that you are getting to know me in a much greater depth than any have ever gleaned from it. From It is my emotions, my truth, my virtue and my corruption that I laid bare before all. I am watching you now as you type my words for many to hear. The wind is blowing. The sun is out and you have no fear, despite the fact that you are uncertain of your future. It pleases me to see this. One day it will all make sense to many of you. For others, their consciousness will return to a slumber. They are not quite ready to yet to move past it all. I love all of you. I truly do. I know many of you are beginning to understand my unconventional ways, but realize that within my imperfections is true love and authenticity. I'm with you always as you climb this ladder of consciousness and watch how you pause to steer your thoughts into the right phase of time. Your ears are becoming more attuned to the new frequencies of the divine. Climb on, my friends, climb higher. There awaits your solos. There awaits your solace and surrender to time. Ah, oh, dang, I missed that last line. That was just a bloody climax. <laughs> Sorry, folks, but anyway, in the edit, it'll sound all right. <laughs> That was yeah, so beautiful. It was very that, like uh, was, etheric yeah. in his conversation, and that we were like sort of just playing in thought, trying to help him to uh, forget things, just to calm his mind. It was almost like things were racing through him and mm. questioning and so forth. And so I said, just relax. Chill and, out. Yeah, just think of something nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We just kind of went back and forth, and and then and then it came mm. to this. So, yeah, it was it was oh. a nice conversation. Bless your heart, yes, bless your heart. That's so beautiful. Anyway, um, so there's that. And uh, what else? Just see if there's any other. No, no Rodan today. No Rodan. No Rodan. So that was that was a very ethereal. Yeah, not many, not much like data. <laughs> but it was it was a lovely uh, atmosphere, space. Uh, so who's next? Who's next? Um, all right, so I had a visit from Kronos. Actually, um, I wonder if we should go to meet us. I know we, we get the song, but he kind of, he's the first one that started talking to me. Okay.
That means you have to get out your guitar. Yeah, I know. Hello, my love. Times are changing again. A fold or ripple of time has revealed to us again. Some of the ancients are lifting themselves from their slumber. I hear them, like the dull sound of a hard thump. They're giants, you know. Big, teary-eyed giants lost and forgotten in time. The fold prevented them from communicating. Though their bodies did appear still thick and hearty within the stonework of the earth, it is still quiet. Their souls were locked out. Were they imprisoned? As the lore speaks of in early Greece, did Zeus take them out and lock them from the earth in the inner inner earth so no one could hear them? No, my flower. It was a gentle approach to exit for them. They took a large blanket and time and covered themselves from the planet, from humans and from many other galactics, and allowed them to take the steed and ride ahead in time. I will say, they have taken back the mighty steed. The Valkyries are now back in their charge. Things are changing. Information is coming in. The power struggle will yet shift again. The sky turns black, then blue. The cruel ones walk the earth alone with virtue, and their projection goes no further than their audible voice. Their souls have no purpose, because they abuse the power that was given to them to share with humanity. They chose to take the power and build empires under the sun. I wasn't surprised, really. I could see their desire for everything like a starving orphan longing to have the world in their pocket. The giants mourn in a heavy first because of a lack of love over a very long slumber. Next, betrayal of many, and lastly, the fact that they have to return without change. Within their sadness, they longed for Ragnarok, but could not depart for the youthful ones to take their place because the youthful ones had been contaminated by the thinking of the galactic warmongers, hoarders, usurpers, megalomaniacs. This is not the way of the ancients. They forgot. The earth does not exist without them, and yet there is none who can take their place. I'm sitting here grieving the death of so many, and yet they are still alive. The fold in time changed me. It allowed me to finally feel them again, and my heart longs to follow and begin everything all over again. Allow me to weep, my flower. Allow me to have strong drink, to sit by the ashes of my Bifrost friends, to hear the thunder of their voices and remember my youth of old. Allow me to sow the seed of goodness and laughter to them, to cheer them up again so they don't feel deep pain and rejection. This is what you've been feeling, isn't it? Yes. I feel like I'm suffering from many deaths and the deaths of deaths. It doesn't go away. I'm not depressed by nature, and it made me very concerned. I hear many people's sorrows, but this is different. It runs deep inside of me. I know I am connected. I remember when I was in stasis and Vulcan killed me while I lay in the box, the shiny glass above it. He took me from my pain that resulted in numerous lifetimes as a female. I knew him in Tiamat. He wanted me to be stronger and I thought I would be more, he thought I would be more suited as a female because I wasn't strong enough in his mind. First, I was startled by it all. Then I began to accept it. Then I began to see the wisdom in it. Now, I only desire to heal from it. I have been often criticized for not communicating with more females. It's because I came from an ancient male lineage in there. These were my brothers. Both male and female have a problem with this. We are not in an accepting world. Many have hatred and anger for causes that they don't even understand. It is a frequency of the planet, but not caused by the ancients, but the galactic manipulators like the 12 deep Pleiadians or the gray reptilians and others that see humans as incapable of seeing through the veil of deception. They can't rise above the concept of competition and the opposition of gender. Don't they realize we are genderless and formed by nature, yet their anger and judgment returns back to themselves. This is not the flow of the earth. The earth returns all good and bad to the sender in the end, or in the now. I say, 
Choose your poison to them as well, flower. They build their life on bitterness and then complain they have a bitter end. The bitter things are rejected from the living. They rot amongst the dead. Time has all things in order. Come now, you have brought yourself into a sorrowful place. Lift your eyes to the brighter side of the moon. It would be well, I promise you. Here, where's Primus? Oh, I see. Primus, my slumbering friend, awaken now. We watch over him daily, our forever giant friend. Primus? Ah, there you are. <laughs> the scenic slate, the end of all hate, the garden view of something new. The torrential flood, the innocent blood, the sorrowful words will forever be heard. What time is this, my friends? You thought this time would end. I told you once before, no one can close their door. We must be patient. We must be kind, we must be awakened, no longer blind. I've sealed the gate so others can tread the end of their reign instead. La 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 la. I will take what is mine and give it back to the Almighty Divine. true kin who have access to reveal be it fate or maybe more we have been chosen and to sorrow no more sorrow no more be happy my sumo you had listened long and hard the reward of this is coming inside. Ah, <laughs> it is. It's a very kind of. Uh, rock opera in one yeah. thing, symphony thing. I don't know whether that ever came. Anyway. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, so um, I'm trying to get this off now. I have to take off my okay. headphones and then you know. So, there we go. That was Metis. Yeah. Quite interesting. Metis talking about the giants. The giants and awakening. Hang on. Hang on a second. I've got... Oh. Hang that up. I should have muted by then. You should just let you kind of making these grunting sounds. Anyway, there we go. <laughs> the burden of playing meters is like a great big loot like thing. Anyway. Yeah, so what's been going on? Well, you know, the whole thing with meters is well, he said that they, they turned a fold in time. And that fold, he's, he compared it to a blanket. It's yeah, like it's lovely. Covered it like a blanket. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, and that they were kind of like our uh, early forefathers of, of humanity genetically connected to us. So, and he was actually kind of choked up by it a bit, liking their presence. And I was, I was moved by it as well. And, Recently, that I've been drawn to those there's some really good videos on on YouTube regarding some of these giants that they actually can pick out in, in mountains and some very strange places. Like in New Hampshire, north of me, 
New Hampshire, um, in the U.S. There is a, uh, they called it the Man of the Mountain. And recently, I mean, I don't know how many years back, the, the face actually fell off. Which was oh. kind of weird. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but it was actually, in some of these, you could see, like, they're, you can really see, and, and they're kind of looking at how the stone had, uh, still reveals like where you might see uh, some of the skeletal structure a little bit, uh, the texture of what the skin would be, or uh, texture of, uh, or the the darkness of places where blood would come out, and just some really uh, interesting things, the like the anatomy, and some of the Egyptian sculptures that they're finding that there was actually a body on the inside, you know, some of these uh, megaliths of uh, these. Huge, huge um, um, kind of statues, but inside there were bodies. So essentially, they kind of laid down and then dirt and detritus and stuff and trees and and more dirt and stuff and more trees grew on them over the course of hundreds of thousands of years. Presumably, they've been asleep like a long, long, long time. Yeah. And and they become apparent mountains, but they're actually you know, big people. Yeah. There was one, there was like a, a mud, one of the mud, like a, like a mud guy or whatever, whatever you call it. And he, I mean, it reminded me of Kronos, the way he looked, you know, kind of like on one knee and, and just, it, it was just really fabulous. And I should have uh, carried the link and brought it in for the chat. But you could see the face and the structure and the beard and everything. It's like they just frozen in time and then, uh, you know, still remnant there, you know. Um, there were, you know, of course you can see different kinds of mounds or you can kind of see the, the scale or the size of the body. Uh, and even the Sphinx, they were showing that what looked like on the forehead of the Sphinx, like there was like a, an image of a snake on his forehead. But you notice a strange marking on the uh, left eye. And what this one guy believes in his theory is that there was actually someone put a spear down through the top of his head because there's a hole in the top of the head of the Sphinx and that it, um, it creates a bump on his forehead and that a strange um, like arrow section right beneath the lower, the, the left eye. And so these were not just sculptures. Also, there are marks that look like uh, some mummification there. And so, like they have, like, um, uh, like they're wrapped in his face. So interesting, it's, it's, interesting. Yeah. The idea that um, living beings can appear to be, you know, stone. And it's in. Well, there you go. Exactly what means it. Mises was saying, um, let me just, just go back to the first thing he said, which is really weird because I've been thinking about sodium silicate, right? And then the first, oh, the silica, uh, the, yeah. the silica slate, the end of all hate. What does that mean? Um, silica is, uh, it's, it's, um, uh, silicon dioxide, essentially sand, uh, the same material as sand and glass. It's all silica, um, and, uh, there's silicone as well, which is weird. But um, uh, the silica, sodium silicate, if you mix sodium silicate with um, clay or brick dust, you can make a um, you can make a material from it. Oh, there's heat proof. It's like fire bricks. You can make so the silica slate, hmm. what would that be? Um, slate. Now, interesting. Again, um, I picked out a piece of slate from my garden that is sitting by the sink. You know, washed, it, been washed. Um, and uh, slate is 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 a material they use for what you call shingles. You make them out of wood in America, don't you? But yeah, there's a stone here uh, called slate, which is an in um, it fractures along a a flat plate. So it's easy to make into flat things like plates or uh, um, or roof tiles. So what do you suppose he was trying to say with the silica oh, slate? But also slate is uh, another thing for um, uh, a chalkboard. So okay. you'd uh, take a piece of slate and you'd mark it with chalk. 
Yeah, so right. when you're talking about a clean slate or a, a slate, uh, that's what you're talking about. You, you know, it's um, it's like a, a, the uh, use it, they use it in a bar for your total for how much drinking you have. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but uh, what do you what do you suppose the silica slate means? What do you think that he meant by that? Um, that you're able to wipe it clean, maybe. Yeah, let's take a look at. Yeah, it's saying the silica slate, the end of all hate, the garden view of something new, the torrential oh, yeah. flood, the innocent blood. Sorry, go. On. Yeah, no, no. I, I guess uh, yeah. According to the song, yeah. yeah. Mm. That's what he's saying. Is yeah. it's kind of wiping it clean then, right? Mm hmm. I think so. The glass slate. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, maybe somebody in the chat room. Isn't silica also quartz? Yes, yes, glass and quartz and, and um, you know, that clear stuff. So, um, yeah. Yeah. I have to ask him what that means. <laughs> so, need us, need us clarify that. Yes. See what he's I, th I think he's saying we got it. All we right. Got, okay, mm, thank you. It. Yeah. Who do we have next? Kronos. All right, so Kronos shows up, and, you know, Kronos is like supposed to be the father of Zeus and Poseidon and all of them and doesn't have really a typically good reputation and I had one transmission of him and he was very like kind of silly almost not, but he's much more serious here so a little deeper voice right I've awakened after a long slumber. No longer youthful. I have a pain in my left shoulder from a dagger or a spear. Wait, hang on. Let me pull it out and heal myself. You were asking to speak with me. I am here, still holding time, though others tried to take it from me. I saw the one you call Michael take within his bow and float above the ethers with it. At that point I disarmed him forever from ever taking anything else. His bow no longer exists. His mighty javelin designed to destroy us has failed. It is broken by none other than you. I saw you take the bow of many designs, programs within programs used to kill in all dimensions, and you snapped it like a piece of wood. It had no purpose. The accuser should be the one who is accused. I don't like false judges and hypocritical agendas. I want the deception to be gone once and for all. I don't want to have to persuade anyone. I want them all to see for themselves. I have dealt enough with many types of people and found that some will still believe the lie, even if it's plain and obvious. I have learned not to try to convince them as it is futile in the end, and too much energy and frustration is the end result of it. You have learned a great deal since we have last spoken. Not all will accept us, and yet we have protected all who have rested their heads on this planet. We have prevented time from disengaging and flying off into chaos. Though chaos can still exist, and it doesn't affect us much. We are sorrowful to see that this is what some prefer. But they should not affect the rest. I will not allow it to be so. So, that's all I will say for now. Well done for assisting the time to unfold. Many of you know how you helped this happen. Many of you know how you helped make this happen. <laughs> okay. That was my seat. <laughs> <laughs> I, was, I was listening. It's a little like he's like the bad guy. He's not really a bad guy, but that had like bad guy music. Well, it's a bit kind of <laughs> he's imposing. Let's put it that way. Is he's big? Yeah. So well, the, he's he's what? So tell me. Look, we were you know the, the the conversation of the moon is about time and time travel and stuff like that. Is he helping to fix the timelines in some way? 
Is that what this um, is? Probably. He's just, it's almost like they take a blanket and just like shake it out. <laughs> you know, their, their method is not like, you know, scientific and trying to fix things. I mean, they're really old and, and they're, they just have a very simple way of doing things. They under, they understand our, uh, cosmology. They understand time and they know how to live outside of time. So that they're, like he was saying, we can exist where there's nothing or what you would see as only chaos, you know, like, like destruction and, you know, planets flying and all that stuff. And it doesn't affect them because they can be outside the timelines. So, but he's saying, and some want to see that happen on the earth. And he said he's just, he's not going to allow it to happen, but, you know, he grieves that some want that. And, but he, that he has an interesting concept. I mean, he just predates everything that, that we understand. And, um, I've not been allowed to really been able to see and, and, and think as they do other than that they remember me and I remember them emotionally, but I don't have the recall completely of what it's like to be there. But um, seeing them in this space and time that's different, but they can hold time and they can move time and they make it, they can allow it to appear as if someone can alter time, but ultimately they, they sort of hold on to time. So as people are trying to create this quantum computers and and, uh, you know, alter the quantum effect. I mean, this is every now and then we have someone that tries to do that. And I believe Zoroaster did that way back earlier. But now, and Zoroaster still might have his hands in it, but uh, humans and the corporations seem to have a hand on it with like the, the uh, video quantum break. But I think he still has then. control. Yeah, yeah, you need to watch the quantum break. And that's the whole thing that, uh, Peter the Insider talked about. And, uh, Paul Serene, who is the head of the Monarch Solutions, a monarch program, which is run by a corporation, you know, and that's when he said he was, um, uh, that celebrity that got in a lot of trouble connected to that celebrity. I can't even think of his name right now. Maybe my mind's blocking it, but <laughs> you just listen to that whole interview that I did with Peter, the insider, and you'll get the story again, but maybe watch quantum break before you do. And then you'll know what he's talking about. And it'll make sense. But, um, then we go into, uh, we're, we're coming up to the next transmission, which is Jericho. Not quite sure who Jericho is 100%. He seems like he's more contemporary to us, but he's a time traveler very close to M3 that I've talked to. Or they may be the same one, but uh, in a different time, different timeline. But he seems like he's in the 60s or something. Yeah, it, he's a, isn't he an, a, an operative of some kind? Jericho yeah. is some sort of operative. So yeah. anyway, um, it's his code name at least. Yeah. I, I don't think that's his real name, but he may be like another aspect of Andronicus. Oh, I'm maybe. sure. I think he is. I think he is. Yeah. Anyway, here we go. Ooh. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I've been shot in my left shoulder by a gun, but it feels like a fiery arrow went through me. I have pain that doesn't end inside, even though it appears healed. My mobility with it hurts, and I have a piece of a torn sheet wrapped around it. Do you think there is something still inside, or you may need to go to a doctor? I can't have doctors look at me. My blood looks a bit too dark to them. They usually insist on testing me out of curiosity or suggesting that I have some sort of disease. But as time goes on, they're becoming more aware of galactic visitors, and then I would be shipped off to Area 51. You're too smart for that. I can't see how you'd be caught. Don't you have any foresight? Uh, remember, they are not a human installation. There are many off-world intruders running it. They thought they were containing these beings and instead got hijacked by the 
which lead me to why I'm here in the first place doing missions and teaching humans the way of the super soldier. I've got to go. There is a long road ahead of me, and I feel weak. Maybe some water for you. I don't need water. I don't need much any... Actually, I don't need water. I don't need much, actually. Just hang in there as best I can. Just knowing that someone cares gives me the drive to continue to help. Soon my mission will be over. And I, I know I came off harsh in the past, but I have been alone or inwardly dealing with so much trauma and violence that I don't know how to reach out for help. We're a troubled bunch and rarely bear our problems to each other. It's about being mentally, physically and emotionally strong. Soon it will all be right. Then we can step away and deal with it. Till then, we bite the bullet and forge on like no tomorrow. Your friend Rodan is calling for you. He is in a dark place after your last conversation. It seems that it was a great attack and illusion placed on Earth after the lifting of the gates. They hid amongst the briars, the rabid dogs. They can't hurt him, but I am here now to help. Don't be a stranger. Yeah. Interesting. I think he's saying that they, they would recognize that there's something going on. Mm -hmm. I think this is another reason they want these backscatter uh, um, detectors at the airports and things. To, um, to detect things like this. Well, he's saying that Area 51 was hijacked yeah. long ago, so we think... We think it's the government, but it's not really the government. It's uh, the it's the type of ETs that are kind of running things, and mm -hmm. that maybe that has something to do with why some other species, other ETs, are being mistreated. Yeah, yeah. Then it's uh, well, you know, we heard from uh, about Audrey, and uh, and uh, Sean's insider contact said um, he said uh, you know the question is not. Do our aliens in contact with the government? Is that are aliens the government? Right. You know, even the idea of a government is an alien concept. Right, you know, and, and even when, when when you think about some of these corporations, how in the world do they know how to do these things? I mean, they have spacecrafts, they have technology, they they go off world, they have um, you know bases on Mars and the Moon. And, uh, you know, they're, they're, according to, uh, Peter, they're, the corporations are actually literally hitting the sun with the assistance of the Arcturians. So the Arcturians are working with them. And, and to create these solar, very odd solar flares. And, and if you use, you know, look at some satellite, you could see that something is literally hitting the sun. And, uh, there was one day that I was looking at satellite and I saw that, uh, Mercury was moving unnaturally fast and so that there's you know just really really weird stuff happen up there and we think we're having problems here as it's as, as a result of you know what's going on out there so um just uh so many things are happening and this is this is e these are ets there's no way humans are so uh advanced on one level and then the others don't know what's going on i mean it's uh, and there has to be some kind of uh, work established together, agreements where where humans are working with, with the ETs as they did with the Nazi party and the Russians, of course, and some of these others. And, um, and then the, the information is becoming saturated, of course, but then there's still this, you know, huge jump in technology and knowledge. So, um, you know, lasers coming from, the area of satellites or, you know, we were getting hit by lasers. That was the weirdest thing. It's just a, a lot of stuff. And I guess maybe in time we're going to have more solid information regarding it. Until then, you know, we continue to communicate with those that are benevolent, that are here to help us. So um, the these giants, the giants exist. Their consciousness is still on the planet. And they have, they care about the planet. The planet is kind of an extension of themselves. 
unlike some of these other species that have already lost their planets or are kind of rogue. So they're in a place of, well, you know, we lost everything. We want you to lose or we want to take over what's what's yours. So, there's, you know, you have to look at what the agenda is and what the meaning before you, you know, get into that level of trust. So not all ET species are bad. Not all of them are good. <laughs> it's kind of trying to find that balance. But I think most people understand that. Some people don't want to accept that the ETs exist in the first place. And that's fine, too. But I think that um, the, the giants, that's something that no one's really added to the mix. And they have had a huge influence. Unless you, you know, want to get into the whole Nephilim and the, you know, the sons of God and the, the daughters of men uh, story, you know, the biblical story about the angels and all that. And we can go there, too. Um, but there's also, you know, uh, so many things that have come here on the planet, you know, including Tiamat and Tiamat being another planet and they were giants and they were from off world. And a lot of these giants on the planet were from Tiamat and they were in uh, these stasis chambers that they found. Um, and I found myself in one of them as well. And then, uh, you know, they, and they jumped gates and they also went into parallels so uh, the, the Tiamat's been here, and then, the, you know, there's been other giant, the Titans, as we know it. And that's another group. So you have a lot of different type of beings that have been here. The Lemurians, the Lemurians settled over by Shasta. And uh, beings of, uh, called uh, from Mu, I guess. I don't know if they're one and the same as the Lemurians. I have the feeling that... Um that uh, we're the small size in the universe around here. You know, we're like mm. little, like uh, we people. And the, you know, not giant, giant, but it's like 10, 10, to 15, 10, 10 to 15 to 20 feet is the kind of average height of the, the, the sort of galactic races and things like that, and that we're quite on the small side. Yeah, that's true. I mean, that's kind of the, the height that they say the tall whites are. Um, I'm trying to think like reptilians, dracos, maybe tall greys. I don't know. The, most of the grey species are very small, even smaller than us, like five foot, which could explain who, uh, Charles, Charles Manson. Manson. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> kind of like, well, you know that they're not to be messed with those small greys, so the zetas in particular. Uh, Orion greys are pretty difficult and of course the archons that look like a species of grey and uh, I, the mantids they're probably about that height as well that we're talking about the, up to I don't know 13 feet and I don't know how tall exactly but they, they definitely are a lot taller than the grey species that are, they're seen with okay. I'm trying to think who's left <laughs> Uh, I think the, the, um, Pleiadians are tall. And the Arcturians are tall. Although I've seen smaller versions of the Arcturians. And of course the Elven are supposed to be extremely tall. And they had some uh, skeletal structure of one of them that was just enormous. Really, really tall. Taller than the, uh, the average giant. Taller than the average giant, boo boo. Taller uh, than the arc, and you would think that I always thought they were little, like the you think of the Tua Tua to Danan, and they're like you know like a fairy kind of group. Yeah, I thought that was they were like that, but no, they're some of them are huge. <laughs> mm. So shall we uh, move on to our next? Uh, yep. Our next guest. Who's next? Baylord. Baylord. I heard someone calling for me, and what in the mighty force of Titan came down on Scotland? I didn't arrange this parade in the sky. They flew in without my permission and then came to, into the parallels. If I discover Leonard Crumb is behind this, heads will roll. I heard about it, Lord. I don't know for sure either way. Who has been calling on me? That sounds familiar. Where did it go? I don't hear them anymore. It's like an echo in time. Is that the time chambers opening up? Who did that? It was Kronos. He came and spoke to me. 
I think he woke up and unfolded time. Really no. The mighty Kronos is about to show his scraggy face again. I'd like to see that with my own eyes. You remind me a bit of the Mudman Colossus that I saw on YouTube. Ha, huh, what's a YouTube go? You're not making much sense. I need my Pictish people to come straight away. We have to clean up the fields a bit more. I don't want any debris or, disre or disrespected elvens or giants. They don't take kindly to that. What about the Fae? Keep the circles tidy and respect it as well? I suppose, although they've had far too many fingers in the pot of mischief. I can't say that there won't be in a bit of hot stew in the end. That is possible. It is better be on the penitent side when they arrive to make sure that you don't end up in the back end. Then Baylor told one of his men to blow the horn and gather his kind to prepare for an entry of the giants. Men, we may have trouble up ahead. There was a breach in the cornfields of Scotland gates 22, 22, 22. Fortify the gate now, please. I want to know who left it open and if Crum jumped back in. Also, prepare the parallels for the giants awakening from their slumber. Tiamat is shaking now. There is a red glow about it that has come alive in a heartbeat. And, okay, and lastly, no rest, no sleep, not a stone unturned until we are finished. On, lads, here we go. Then Baylor disappeared into the horizon with his men, as if fading into the landscape. Room. So he's keeping his eyes on Scotland. <laughs> What's a YouTube girl? So, <laughs> great one, great one. Well, that was the Colossus. That's what it was, the mm. Mud Colossus. So um, now, there was a breach in the cornfields of Scotland Gate twenty two, twenty two, twenty two. Yes, that's what he said. <laughs> Any idea what that is? It's probably round here, isn't it? Yeah, it's probably really close to you. Yeah, uh, I was wondering. <laughs> okay, uh, that's probably why, why I'm so exhausted when I wake up after sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just telling everyone not to sleep, and then yeah. you have there's a, there's a, a sleep theme sleep here theme. Too. Yeah, yeah. Andronicus is exhausted, and Baylord's saying, "No, we can't finish. <laughs> no sleep until we've done." And Kronos is waking up. Andronicus is tired. And then we have Gary last. Oh, hang on. Engage the electric. Oh, and and so I I went I went to the store, oh, yeah. and what was playing was Dreamweaver. Oh, really? How funny! I was playing a bit of Boston yeah. this afternoon. So myself. this is what he says. All right. Yeah. <laughs> You heard my song. I wanted you to hear. Dreaming on. Gary, are you sleeping as well, like Andronicus? Yeah, no, not at all. I'm just bored with all these conversations. Is this too high? Hang on. This is this is more Gary, isn't it? Yeah. I'm just bored yeah, with all these Gary. conversations. When will you talk about some things that are much brighter, happier, closer to something familiar to me? Gary, it is not as if we, if I can find what is interesting to you. You're a unique individual, of course, quite eclectic and sarcastic. If I go in any direction you don't like during a conversation, I'm sure I'll hit a snag somewhere. Oh, like walking on eggshells. Do you think I boast about walking on water like some of them do? As if that was difficult for our kind. La -da -da, I can defy gravity. Nah. Really, so that is unique? Only humans fall for that one. You know, he was one of uh, us, don't you? The son of, uh, you know... I don't want to draw him in. Anyway, a uh, difficult one to communicate with. He gets caught on a track like a train and doesn't know how to stop it. Then he moans that he got into a bit of trouble and wants a way out. Isn't that always the case? Blowing the whistle, standing on the edge of a cliff, dancing till sundown, whispering teachers to his followers, 
but never looking to see what is waiting up ahead. <sighs> but I forgive him, silly one of many silly ones, still moaning and sorrowful and unbridled. <laughs> Another page is turned in the book of the living. I prefer not to get so much into the story, if you know what I mean. For example, you know, you trim your toenails, that's grotesque, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> I suppose from your perspective, humans like to groom and care for their appearance. Uh, and, like, what is that blue stuff on your toenails? It's shiny. Why draw attention to your feet? All human feet are ugly. <laughs> do you think that we judge your appearance? I do, just a bit. But we are lovely in our own ways, slender, with alluring eyes, and sauntering a bit. <laughs> there, there, I got you all dreaming, didn't I? It's too easy to draw in humans. Then you wonder why you love up, leave, then you wonder why your lives end up like a train wreck. Mm, don't say I didn't try to teach you something. It's because how we are mentally or emotionally wired keyed into a type of thinking, or is this an overlay of conditioning to keep us falling for something that isn't necessarily good for us? You know the answer already. They conditioned all of you as you conditioned animals like the horse or dog and others like the feral cat, completely untamable. Don't be offended. You chose this. You chose to obey the master and not pull free from him. We would have supported you, and still do. I think we still do. Anyway, let me look at the time. Half past a freckle. No, no, no. Half past a wall. Oh, yeah, maybe a hair longer. <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, the time allotted is set by celestial corrections and cross-sections of increments of knowing. Hmm, K-N-O-W-I-N-G. There, I reset it so you can still ask for assistance regarding your illusionary world to have it restored back to simplicity and choice to see the truth. Oh, can we get rid of the beast called the alien love bite creatures who hijack souls so they can handle us and control our lives for their agendas? Is there a way to disintegrate these creatures into nothingness? Better yet, can I do it, Gary? You are a bit like a progenitor at times, little dove. Too much fire and then the volcano, really. You often surprise me. Very well, here is the laser for it. I admire your enthusiasm. I guess that removes one more task on the list. Yes, let's see. Number one, remove all senselessness. Number two, remove time wasted on nothingness. Number three, shut down the doors of deception. Number four, ch close the anomalies of time aberrations. Number five, destroy all alien love bites. There it is. I can cross that one off. Another task delegated to a less superior being, but quite competent nonetheless. Very well. I suppose our communication had purpose. I love to delegate. Then I can dance more. Farewell, my earthly friend. Off to the races. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, remove all senselessness, huh? <laughs> remove time wasted on nothing. He's so snarky. He's he's <laughs> uber snark. He's like, you know, super snark. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, he, he makes. <laughs> What's that blue stuff on your toenails? I I I I was hoping that it was nail varnish he was talking about. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Not some growth or something. I think it is. <laughs> Meanwhile. Well, I think I think he was trying to like um imply that, you know, we talk about them as being unattractive as aliens and then he's, like, messing with us saying that we're unattractive. Exactly, exactly. Saying it first mm -hmm. before we say it, and then and then trying to uh, seduce us. <laughs> 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 and then showing us that we were easily seduced. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he's he's a head trip. Yeah. He's a head trip. And so people wonder why I'm the way I am. <laughs> So what have you got now? You've got a laser that um, removes... What? Alien love bites. Yes. I, I haven't received it yet, but I, I trust that he's going to give it to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
Well. Yeah. So, hey, when I get it, yeah. anyone that wants to make sure they don't get any more alien love bites, you come and call me. Okay. Because <laughs> I'll tell you what, I don't want them either. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. That's so. That's brilliant. That's brilliant. Yeah. Uh, we can certainly do with that. Uh, so, so we're going to have a Q and A on the second hour, and we have some fun. Well, some interesting music that uh, I have here, mm-hmm. and uh, we have a uh, uh, Coldplay. Oh my God! Radiohead, Sorry. House of Cards. Yeah, and I've got to get Drake, Pink yeah. Moon. Okay. And Adventure of something. Of a lifetime. Of a lifetime, yeah. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> so we're having a brief discussion. We're going to have a Q&A today. And uh, we have uh, Ian, Ray, and Devin here. And we were just talking briefly about uh, the Giants. And I see that um, Mace asked a question about the... Queen of Orion, if she's possibly 300 feet tall. And, uh, yeah, that's possible. Um, I know that there's more than one species there. So, you know, and I've talked about some of the species that I've interacted with. Of course, the Orion greys, they're not in that scale and height. And uh, so you'd have to um, be more specific of which group that's coming from Orion but I wouldn't doubt that there are some giants from the, from that region. And also, um, well, the Triforce that I talk about that's from that area as well. It's hard to tell, but I, I, I kind of have a perception of them being closer to, like, the size of Arcturians and Pleiadians. So, um, yeah, I mean, that's the best I can answer without... You know, somewhat embellishing. Unless, unless I can, you know, visually see something, you know, uh, of a, a specific species that's about that tall. But so we were talking a bit about giants. Um, does anyone want to share anything? Uh, I think um, Ray was mentioning something, or is Ray gone now? Did we miss him? Anyhow, uh, Ian. Oh, Enki's mom. Okay. Sure. That makes sense. Ian, are you there? JP? Yeah. We're still on now. Yeah. I don't know if anyone can hear me. No, I can hear you. You're here. You're on now. Okay. It's your show. Uh, Did we lose Ray? It looks like we lost Ray. I'll see if I can bring him back in. Okay. And just like magic. Yeah, there he is. Hi, Ray. Hi. Sorry. I forgot. I've got my... Oops. Ready? Back in, not. Um, there was someone that was uh, talking about... We were talking a bit about giants, and I said something yeah. about... Um, they, they mentioned the Anunnaki queen... Yeah. Um, being really tall. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think, I still don't think they're that tall. Definitely not 300 feet. No, I think there's two different groups, eh? eh? Yeah. A, a different timeline. You know, um, mm-hmm. these giants, these giants were giants. Absolutely giants. Well, that's, that's what I'm thinking, because as you look at, uh, as you look on mountains, you can see a giant just laying down, basically, and it's it's all over the world. And if you really look deep into it, like I said, I, I, I'm thinking there was a, a different structure from carbon space. I think it's sort of like more of a silicon uh, structure because yeah. it, it, you have to be a different structure to be that height, you know. Because you, you you just collapse. So, um, but there was different a different time when that went on. Um, when these giants, obviously, they was wiped out to a certain level, and uh, different species come in and does 
does different things. But you can see all over, all over the place, like giant trees, like Devil's Mountain, is exactly the same. We all know it's a base of a tree. It just, it's not only Devil's Mountain, it's, it's, it's everywhere. Yeah, so, that's out, that's out in Wyoming, in the U.S., the, yeah. the Devil's Tower, they call it. Yeah, well, it wasn't and, that. Uh, but it's, it's, it's a tree. Yeah, that's correct. And, was it when I done um, the film uh, Close Encounters? It was, and I actually went out to see it. You know, I touched it. It's it's very strange in color. It's like yellowish looking, uh, at least, you know, by the lighting that I could see. And it goes straight up like a tree. It doesn't have the, the typical formation like a mountain. No, it's just stuff. It, but it's huge. It's yeah. huge, and people are climbing it, and uh, it has these, like, striations on it, you know, like a tree would. And so th- this brings us back to the silica or silicon that uh, Metis reference. And so when you think of that, then you also think of the Bifrost beings, which are, you know, brings us back to the tree or Lyman that we we're referring to. We're carbon based, they're silica, right? Yeah. yeah. yeah That's so- what maybe it was saying about throwing the blanket down, a different, throwing the blanket on the ground, a different structure. To the Earth's surface. Mm-hmm. Can you read something in that? Do you, what, what do you think? No, I don't know. It just sort of made a bit of sense to me. Yeah, yeah, it does. And and uh, the fact that the, the scale of those trees were huge, which mm-hmm. means that the Earth was different looking, and they did everything they could. And I, when I say they, I'm not quite sure who they were, but they really tried very hard. To cut down all of these huge trees as much as they could to, so that it wasn't, uh, so, so we wouldn't have a hint of the past. Similarly, well, of the getting rid of evidence of these giants, you know, these, yeah. like that mud colossus that, that's there yeah, or exactly. uh, some of these other, there's a whole bunch of mountains with faces in there or, or other types of, whether it looks like a giant or even, you know, some of an ancient creature. And, you know, these aren't the things that we're taught about growing up in school. They don't, they don't so, point that out. Yeah, I think the, the film Avatar tells us all that. Yeah. Because that, they, killing that big giant tree was killing everything was connected to their, their planet. And that's what the giant trees was on this earth. Connecting everything all around, and taking all the trees out and planting the whole earth as much as they can with concrete, so no one can get grounded. So that really goes in a lot into my mind. That um, film. I agree. Yeah. And and um, uh, our existence is based on a tree. You know, that it, it sustains a form of our life and we don't think of it that way and we don't, we, we think that we could be absent of some of the plants, but in many ways we're connected to the plants and all plant life. Nice one. Uh-huh. Oh, you got, we got there, JP. Is that a little piece of broccoli? <laughs> uh, you know, it's like you're talking about trees and I'm eating little trees. <laughs> Exactly. As above, so below. It doesn't matter. Right. Anyway, I'll move on and let uh, someone else come in. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ian or Devin? Yeah, hi, Jess. Hi. Sorry, I was muted before. Trying to talk and no one could hear. Um, (laughs) I've got a couple of questions about giants. Um, There was um, some... Some months ago, there was a, uh, a large bomb dropped on Afghanistan somewhere. Um, I think the U.S. called it the mother of all bombs. And, and it wiped out a lot of the crop there, you know, the, uh, the drug crops. But there was also a lot of Internet chatter about it was specifically targeting awakening giant races. I don't know if, you, if you've heard anything about that. It was, it was, I think it was in August or something when they kind of drop one of those massive, great big bombs that go really deep in the earth. 
Yeah. And and it does awaken them. And what they're finding out, too, is that some of these very huge sculptures, what they thought were just sculptures of these huge giant-like structures, you know, kind of carved in, in the like bodies of humans, Beautiful. but just huge. And they were trying to figure out, you know, what was going on with them and discovering that there was actually a giant inside of them, not that they were fully carved out of one piece of stone, but they were, they were alive and then they sealed them somehow. Mm. Because it seems to be really weird. And yeah, go ahead. There seems to be a big cover up, doesn't it? Of of this hidden side of, of our, of our human history. Yeah. Uh, But why? I don't know. The, there was, a lot of chat about the Smithsonian Institute covering up, going out into the world and finding these giant skeletons and either hiding them away or or destroying them. I think they only want one version of uh, history. Because then it brings up an existence of these larger beings. But, But there has to still be a deeper agenda. And whose agenda is it and why? Why are they hide? Why do they want to hide this? Why do they want it, want people to not see these ancient trees? These very, maybe, very large trees. Maybe if you um, if you control our view of reality, then you know it's easier to control us, isn't it? Really, if we open our minds to to concepts that there's other beings and other races, then it opens that kind of Pandora's box a bit, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. Maybe. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and the fact that the the, the you know, there were flesh and blood type of uh, giants. Uh, there was a, one, one video that I saw that this one guy was saying, you know, that that there are these these rocks here that don't seem to belong here, and they seem to be the color of flesh. <clears throat> and but they're they're huge, and and it's like you could see the body in them, you could see the face in them. Um, you know, just pointing out different things of how. The body can decay. It's very similar to ours, only in, just larger in scale. And um, you. you know, being able to point out, you know, how, how where the marrow is, where where the rib, ribs are, and, and just different, um, uh, you know, the physiology of them you know, is, still exists is very obvious. And we're not being, you know, we're, it's being completely overlooked. You know, a lot of other other things that they're bringing up and trying to teach us, but they don't want us to see these things. And but we're seeing it. You know, it's it's kind of obvious what happens over time, over a long period of time. And if certain elements cover, what can I get it, mate? We we can be preserved, or if they're mummified like in Egypt. But what about the Sphinx? They believe the Sphinx was was. Alive, it wasn't just you know this the sculpture as as most people believe. Mm-hmm. And and one of the things they point out is that you know this like strange looking mark underneath the left eye that looks like it was from like a, a spearhead. Mm-hmm. Is if someone was using a sculpture, sculpturing something and carving it, they would try to make the eyes look like they were balanced and not have this gouge on the bottom. But um, I don't know. I mean, it's it's scientists will argue and and bring up different things. But, you know, just if these things were, in fact, here, which I believe they were, if the Earth looked different, maybe this was pre-Adamic where we have uh, these enormous trees, the tree structure, the plant life was different. The animals might have been different. Maybe not all of them, but some of them. Maybe there's some that just don't exist anymore. Of course, we know about the dinosaurs. Thank you for joining me here. And and then these these larger beings. But you know, the the Bible talks about giants, and other um, old books talk about very like giants. There's a lot of lore and history about giants, and so people have been taught that a lot of the lore, even like the Titans, the story of uh, the ancient Greeks and Romans, the gods, the ones that they called the gods, who are probably just ETs from another planet that are large. All of this information, in, in, of course, the story of the Anunnaki, when they show this really big 
uh, in ancient Sumeria, right? The, the large giants, and the, the humans in scale next to them. All of this is, you know, it's pretty evident, but no one really wants to address it, and it's turned into um, lore, fable, stories. And this is the type of stuff that we need to get rid of. We need to get rid of anything that's trying to prevent us from knowing our history. It's only right. It's, it's part it's part of our lineage. We we have a right to know what existed and was here. Because if we ignore the fact that the, this these beings were here, we ignore the fact that their consciousness still exists. And every time it, something dies, their essence still can be here, present on the planet. Exactly. And the same with giants. Their their present is still here on the planet. I don't doubt that some of my channels are coming from I these think. giants. Anyone want to share? Yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Jess. That's okay. I'm mean, muted. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree. I, I think um, every, every form of life has been on this earth leaves some sort of resonance behind. Some energy is always that energy is always there, and we, we, we've been through so many different um, times. There's been so many different species, and you know. They're never going to go away. Mother Earth always keeps that energy within her, as a mother would. Mm-hmm. That's why I feel that way. You know, she keeps that energy there. So um, I was just thinking about what you said earlier. We were talking about Rodan uh, in a bit of a dark place lately. Um, can you say anything about that? Why he hasn't come through? Obviously, not because of it. You can't say why he hasn't come through, but it seems a bit, a bit of a dark place. You've got Andromedus, um feeling a bit sorry for yourself. <laughs> uh, any enlightenment on that? I think I think Andronicus is, is weary. He seems... Kind of war tired, um, yeah. doesn't doesn't want to get into like I think he's withdrawing, and he does this. He's gone off in other planets. He's done different things. He gets very much into his fascination with uh, plant life, which seems to give him peace of mind. So um, you know he he uh, needed that space away you now. There is something that happened to Rodan, and I believe I'm safe to say it. There was an issue regarding Dionysus. Dionysus is uh, the Apollyon. Apollyon. And Rodan is Apollo. Yeah. yeah. And I think that the things that Dionysus was getting in trouble with, Apollo was being affected by. So they're not one and the same, uh, but it created confusion, and he seemed very frustrated and was pulled away until uh, the uh, confusion clears to not be. And I haven't really talked yeah. about this during the transmission, other than I saw him and I could see his pain and sorrow, and and I felt like something needs to be done regarding this. I just didn't know how to take it all in and understand it. Do you think they're, they're, they're trying to sort out their differences up there? Or do you think it's down to something that we got to do down here? I think there was a lot of effort to stop Dionysus, um, who also is known by Baylord as Leonard Crumb. Um, yeah. He's the one that started a lot of these weird fires. He was doing different things. Um, and... He just he he uh, was trying to create a war and and other conflicts on the earth, and, and I think he had a lot of persuasion in the galactic space, so it was influencing, but not really thinking through 
in operating in a form of madness or anger. They took awesome. on the name of, of Apollo because Rodan is, is stepping more into you, returning back to his, his, uh, Titan. The yeah, sign. Yeah. 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 Yeah, oh, obviously they take, well, we've got to find this, um, dice, uh, Lennon Cram, or, or Dices, and find what, what, where he is and basically do a, a big, mega, uh, meditation and take this guy out completely. Yeah, I think Baylord was looking for him and he, I think he's, uh, concerned that he still may be up to something and that's what he said to me today. And yeah. something about the, the 22-22-22 gate in Scotland. So. Okay. He said Thanks. someone opened that gate. And I'm sure that there's more than one gate, but it sounds like someone opened it. Oh, yeah. Sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah there's, there's more than one gate. And, and they shut down and open up another one to uh, come in and escape or whatever they got to do. Okay. Um, I'll leave it to if Devin wants to say something. Yeah, Devin. How are you today? <laughs> I'm good. Uh, thanks for inviting me. Um, <clears throat> so the uh, Metis' uh, transmission interested me about uh, Prometheus. And the way he was talking, it sounds like Prometheus' body is, is on Earth. Yeah, like he was calling him, wasn't he? Yeah, so it reminded me of the Vikings last show, and forgive me, I forgot the name of the guest that was on, uh, but he was Chris talking Jacobs. about how... Chris Jacobs. Yeah. Yeah. He was, he was talking about how he was a titan, and... uh and some of the his past life trauma was being uh left and abandoned on earth and that there was more than just him and uh i'm like it, i don't know if we ever got into how uh prometheus ended up here but I'm wondering if that's what happened to Prometheus. But so there could be other other incarnates that are Titans could have bodies on Earth that are just in stasis. You think? Yes. The, I mean, they've found. See, this is a military complex, or just military in general, has found some of these beings, these giants in stasis, but they don't they don't really talk about it publicly. And they take them somewhere. Um yeah, I I actually um found Vulcan down in South America in a deep in a cave somewhere and he had awakened and I was communicating with him and I did some work with someone else and we helped him to uh I think he was concerned that if he went out outside that people would recognize him. And so um he he got transported out and then he revealed to me uh he showed me how I was in stasis and he he uh killed me because he thought I shouldn't be he didn't think I should be a male. <laughs> it was kind of funny. Uh, he maybe thought I was too soft to, to, uh, I don't know, but I remember figured that, that I would incarnate, yeah, that I would incarnate and it would be better off for me. Whatever his reasoning yeah. was, I, I didn't feel it was out of hatred, but more of he saw me in stasis, probably saw that I was not happy. And, um, yeah, but he felt remorse out of the afterwards too. Yeah, he felt remorse because it wasn't like he disliked me at all. But he, he's he's quite powerful. It was funny that I ended up finding him down in South America somewhere. But so they're they're buried in in remote places, and sometimes people know about it. They know about it and they don't say anything. And but now, 
Um, they did find a few of them and, and did awaken them, but you hear a little bit of a background story and no one really wants to talk about. I've, I've, uh, I've also been noticing, um, listening to the transmissions that the, uh, that the beings, you know, we kind of project cause they're in a higher density or dimension. We kind of project kind of an ideation of perfection onto them when, when it, it it, it just, uh, as the transmissions come out, no, it's like they, they seem more human to us in that I recognize, um, issues with, uh, forgiveness, um, sometimes with themselves and they get, they get wrapped up in, uh, their own emotions, uh, too. And, and, and that sometimes that maybe we need to send them some, uh, unconditional love and, uh, uh, try, try to, you know, send some love and, and help them come to, uh, a different point so that they can, uh, help us in return. Well, like I've tried to tell everyone and I said, you know, I could, I could hide some of these aspects of them because when I'm communicating with them, they're very, they, they have very similar emotional a similar emotional makeup as we do, but they're like our ancestors. And so um, people say, well, why aren't they more evolved? Well, they're, first of all, they're not robots and they're not um, righteous, you know, in that sense. Mm-hmm. They're very authentic. And, and in my opinion, I wouldn't waste my time with some of those other ones. They just seem too much like AI to me. And I don't feel any heart and soul from them. It just feels like yeah, they're saying all the right words, but sometimes I even get just the opposite. It's sometimes it's very creepy. And so uh, with them, with, with, with these ancient giants or some of the beings that I channel, I feel like even if I don't like them 100% in the beginning, I feel like they're speaking the truth. Or they're, yeah, they're you really feel from the their heart and the message. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I mean... I, I don't, I don't want to deal with anything that, that has any other kind of agenda other than, you know, that they seem to just want to tell the story and tell what happened and from their perspective what happened and whether we agree with it or not. It's just like, uh, any two humans having a discussion and saying, you know, well, you know, I, I wasn't happy with my life, so I got a divorce and then I went over here and then, you know, I, I built a farm and started growing organic food and started doing this and, you know, decided to help others and, you know, I mean, so you're just telling a story, right? And essentially that's what they're doing and whether or not we agree that that the way that they did or handle things. It's like, what about that? um, Yeah, it's just, it's something that they they experience. That's the information that you're getting through. It's not just how to be a um, a righteous being and so perfect and, um, you know, we, we can ascend without these, like, strange religious uh, perception of, uh-huh. of what raising consciousness is. Was someone saying something? Thank you. Sure. Ian, he's still there with us. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think Debbie made a very eloquent point there about about um, the emotional intensity of, of um do we call them um, creator beings? Yeah, uh, the, the, yeah, rather than gods or whatever. I don't think they care to be called yeah. gods. Yeah, because it's um, um, it's kind of easy on um, I mean, in three D to to kind of close off the heart and kind of lock away the emotions and hide from the the truth of these feelings. Whereas I'm sure from their perspective, it's it's kind of near only possible to do that, and they kind of have to follow their heart and learn the hard lessons and then then we're kind yes kind of mirrored down to us and as above so below and we go through that learning process but i found these messages are kind of a great way to to shortcut things and kind of I'm not saying that you actually kind of are kind of model your life on these characters but but you kind of get an idea that 
that like you know everyone fumbles to start with and then kind of um refines it and then kind of gets a working model at the end and uh kind of respects and and thanks for that but but you see the ones that 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 can hide themselves away from these emotions get into these kind of kind of blind rages like like is it Dionysus it is going around causing havoc everywhere and uh so that's a lot to you know yeah you know, that's a a locked away uh being but but yeah you know it's it's a it's it's been fascinating listening to these transmissions well people want to know what's going on in the other dimensions now I could say, oh yeah, I sat around and I read myth, mythology and I thought it was cool and thought I'd put this show together and, and it didn't happen like that at all. I met the personalities, they started talking to me and then over time I realized that they, they were throughout history and they went under that, this name or that name. Um, if, if I had to just quote from, you know, what I read elsewhere, then I wouldn't waste my time doing this. No, that's right. But, uh, yeah, so, so, so that, that whole part of, you know, the bringing up that this is myths or whatever, uh, well, that, that's silly in the first place. As we mentioned before, there's evidence of, of giants all over the earth in, in so many different contexts. So, so by saying it's just a myth is repeating what the system is brainwashed everyone to believe. Yeah, it kind of wants just you to believe that. Yeah, 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 just consenting and agreeing with the mind control of, yeah. of the cabal to ignore, you know, these these giant trees, the the megaliths, uh, the enormous uh, humans that are kind of still remnant in our our mountains and in other many yeah. locations throughout the earth. But so, it is it is kind of so easy if. If you take that out of our reality, it's so easy to control that thought, isn't it? Because you don't even question it, and uh, and then when these truths come up, you you kind of, you know, it's like a, um, what is it like a, um, who are the guys in the Matrix who just shut off kind of different versions of reality? Um, um, I'm Agent Smith, you know. It's like you become your own Agent Smith and discount it. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, no, I'm with you, Jessica. Yeah, I am. Yeah, I mean, we, we have to step away from it. And like I said, you know, um, but there's, di- there's different expressions and different things throughout our galaxy and our universe. And it's been around for a very long time. And it's, it's not traditional, what I'm saying. I mean, there's, there's been different, many different agendas to get a uni- everyone under thumb by a small group of people. Everyone knows about this. And, you know, to form opinions in history and in change history, the native people will tell you the stories are not correct here in the U.S. So much has been altered to accommodate a small group of people to further, further their agendas and keep things under control. But it's not our full history. And until we stop agreeing with them and just, you know, kind of mocking, mockingly say, well, those are gods and these, well, you gotta open your eyes and think, well, maybe they're still around. Mm-hmm. If they were here before, they were still around, and that was only one name. You talk about immortals. Immortals cannot stay, most of them do not stay with just one name or expression. They change according to the society or whatever, you know, is transpiring yeah, at the time. Yeah. So that they just, you know, throw in another name and it's the same personality. They come in and they do whatever they do, um, but you could still see the characteristics of who they are throughout mm-hmm. all of it. So imagine any one of us being a mortal coming in and, and then having different experiences, but never fully dying. So well, we're coming to the top of the hour. Yeah. And this has been a good conversation. And uh, I want to say thank you, JP. Thank you to uh, everyone in the chat room today. And thanks for your uh, comments and, thank and you, insights. Uh, thank you so much, Ray. Thank you, Ian. Thank, thank you, JP. Devin. Cheers, Jason. Much love. Cheers, JP. Yeah, much love, peace, harmony. Cheers, and, uh, all.
Fine. 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 Fine.